Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to Hobby Night. This week, the Indominus Crusade has arrived. But with Indominus arriving, that does not change our plan to paint a troop from every codex. So this week, I thought we'd use the Assault Intercessors from Indominus to paint up a Blood Angel from the Fifth Company. That might look kind of like the Hobby Knights. I might need these Marines for that army. That's why we're going to be doing this. But the interesting thing about these Marines and everything in the Indominus box is the fact that they're all easy to build. So I thought it'd be cool to show you how to take advantage of that with your priming process. I'm going to prime this intercessor using a Xenothal method. So assembling him first is going to serve me really well. After priming him though, we'll disassemble him to make the painting process much easier. So make sure when you are assembling him to begin with that you don't push the pieces together too tightly. For a Xenothal highlight, I recommend holding the mini at arm's length with the paint can close to your chin or chest. Then spray in a couple of quick solid bursts from the top, then tilting the miniature slightly to catch the raised areas with a couple of quick shots. By priming him using this method, I'm able to turn this plain Mechanicus Gray Mini from this to this and turn it into a much more interesting subject. This will add a lot of visual intrigue to our contrast paints that we're about to apply. Now that our priming process is complete, I have re-disassembled him and I have him in pieces to make applying this red and all of our other colors a lot easier. So we're gonna first take Flesh Terror's red and our medium shade brush and apply this over the entire miniature with the exception of the hands that are holding the two weapons. We'll do that with a finer detail brush later because I wanna make sure I don't get any of this red on basically the gun or the sword and ruin the Zenithal highlight that I got because I want to use that effect on that weapon as well. And as you can see, our red tone is already getting the effect that I want. We get some nice shadows, we get some nice shades, or um, highlights rather, and it looks beautiful. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and take our te Black Templar and do all of our trim and details for our miniature because of course this is a Blood Angels of the fifth company and they have black trim. Now you may want to readjust, and this is one of the benefits that having them in pieces allows you to basically do is you can rearrange where the miniature is being held and so that making doing say the trim for example like I'm doing here a lot easier to accomplish because I could move it. It also not having his arms attached makes getting all the little pieces in between his legs especially a lot easier. Angela! What? What is all this? Um, I... I might have a problem. I have too many minis to paint, and not enough subscribers to encourage me to do it, so don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the videos. What I like to do after I've applied my two primary colors, this being the red and the black, is I like to do a cleanup stage where I bring out all of my details because I'm going to be putting additional colors over top that. And in this instance, I am using gray sear because it's a nice neutral gray and I think it is a nice blend of my two prime, um, primer colors. So it works really, really well for me. Now you could, if you wanted to, go ahead and be a little bit more careful when you're applying your red tone or whatever your base color is for your Marines and not get it all over, say, the detail portions. You could have avoided the Aquila, the piece on the arm, much in the same way that I avoided getting the red on the weapons. I just find for myself personally that it works better and is a little faster for me if I do my cleanup stage because now I can apply my other colors very cleanly. And that next color is going to be Basilicum Gray. And we're going to use this on the weapons just to give it a little bit of a differentiation between our blacks and get some nice muted gray tones.
And I decided at this time to go ahead and take the opportunity to drill out the barrel while I had the gun detached because honestly that made the most sense to me and I like adding this little detail. Now this is something you can choose to do or not to do. It's totally up to you. I think it's a nice touch. Next up, we're going to go ahead and apply snake bite leather to his entire belt region. This will be the holster on the belt, the belt itself, and the bags. Although in the end, I did decide to keep one of the bags metal. And because I am a bit of a traditionalist when it comes to my weapons, we're going to go ahead and apply a bit of Blood Angel's Red to both the sword and the gun to make them from Mars. I'm getting really excited because I've got two final base colors left to put on my miniature, which is Yod and Yellow, which we'll be applying to the Aquila as well as the emblem on his arm, as well as the hilt of his sword, because I like to have my marines have a bit of gold in them. Finally, the last step is to take some Warp Lightning Green, and we're going to take one of our tiny brushes, a very fine point, I use a Da Vinci, and we're going to gently apply this to the eye. It is very satisfying when you get this right and very frustrating while you're doing it, because my goodness, it is a little bit of a pain, but when you get it right, it looks so good. So just take your time, be delicate, try to brace your hand against something. That's what I tend to do. It means that the shaking doesn't happen as much and I can get more control because then you end up having a miniature that looks like this, nice green eyes, fully base coated. And now we can go ahead and do a little bit more detail work. Because while I could consider this guy basically table ready and I would be happy to put him on his base, finish it up real quick and call him done, I want to take him to the next level. So we're going to apply a bit more paint to him to bring out some additional details. And the additional detail work that I want to apply to these miniatures is actually quite simple. It's just two shades. The first of which is going to be Nuln Oil, which we are going to apply thinly over basically the entire miniature with the exception of the yellow and brown portions of the paint. Lastly, for our yellows and browns, we're going to take Reichland Flesh Shade, which has turned into probably my most favorite shade because my goodness, just look at what it does to that yellow. You immediately get this great enhancement of all of those colors. And even over top of this brown, it enriches it just enough and gives it super great detail, which I absolutely love. So that's literally all we're going to be doing for emphasizing this miniature and adding any additional details. Next up, we're just going to remove him off of his base. As you can see, quite simple. They have this new nice base design, which makes it very, very easy. And we're going to take our Astro Granite and just spread this all over the entire thing. Being able to detach him from the base makes putting it on there super easy. And then while I'm waiting for my Astro Granite base to dry, because we do want to make sure it's dry thoroughly before we do anything else to it, I'm going to assemble the miniature. And as you can see, Putting him back together, fully painted, makes it super easy. Although I do seem to struggle a little bit with the pegs, but that's just my own incompetence with it. They're actually quite easy to push together and it goes together really nice and clean and it's super, super satisfying. With our Marine fully assembled, our last step is to apply the Bielton green shade to his base so that it'll match the one that you see on screen with him.
And here he is, all tufted and based, nicely rimmed, and my very first 9th edition miniature fully completed. And I'm really, really pleased with how he came out, and honestly, that is primarily because of the easy build nature of him. Keeping him separate made painting this guy one way faster, and also just a lot easier because I could get into some of the crevices that are sometimes difficult to get into when you're painting a marine a lot simpler because he was, you know, just able to slide in and I could keep him separate and everything. And honestly, the pegs also allowed me to put that into the tack, which meant that I didn't even have to really move him around that much while painting, which was awesome. The other neat thing is his base has a new sort of like larger hex shaped peg that will go into the base that he sticks into it. And that honestly made doing the base a lot easier. I was able to paint this thing super fast and it took no time at all. Honestly, I'll probably pre-do all my other ones so that they're just all ready to go. And then I just have to put the tufts on and put him into it. And it worked really, really nicely. And I really am excited to see what people do with their Indominus box. I think painting everything in there is going to be super quick um, and or at least a little bit easier for people because of the easy to build nature. I also just think that there's a lot that you can do with them. I'm excited to see all of the new sculptures um, or all just the new sculpts for the minis out on the tables and everything as people are using them. And next week, I hope you guys join me because we are going to be working on something a bit older as it awakens from its tomb world. Join me as we paint a Necron warrior.